Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Cottage Kitchen at the Elliott Homestead. Today, I want to walk you through my five favorite cheeses to put out when company is coming over. This is a busy time of year. I know we all have a lot of special meals planned. There's a reason why all of these cheeses are going to be on this cheese board, and I want to teach you a little bit about all of them. And I want to take you someplace really special. There is a family right in the middle of Sicily that has been making cheese for three generations. We had the pleasure of visiting them when we were back in Sicily. So I'm going to show you this historic breed of cattle and how this family makes a really special cheese from their land. Okay, we're going to start off really simple. This is actually a local to me cheese. This is a freshly made mozzarella cheese. Now we're all very familiar with mozzarella, but a lot of times we equate it to the mozzarella that we find in the store, which is quite a bit different than fresh mozzarella. So this comes from a farm in Ferndale, which is a few hours away from me, and I'm able to get it sent actually to our doorstep. God bless FedEx. Um, and this is a very mild cheese. So I think of mozzarella as like the rosé of your cheese board. This is, if you're going to be doing it in courses, this is the one that you want to start with because it's so mild and it just doesn't pack the punch of these other cheeses. If you follow up a Parmesan with mozzarella, the mozzarella is going to fall a little bit flat, but there are some things you can do to just sort of punch up that flavor a little bit. If you'd like, like drizzling it with olive oil, sprinkling it with dried herbs or drizzling it with a balsamic vinegar. That can make a little bit of a mess on a cheese board, however, so I'm just going to keep mine kind of fanned out and beautiful. This is a fresh, soft cheese. It's meant to be mild. It's meant to be easy to eat. It's meant to be enjoyed by maybe people who have a little bit of a softer palate towards cheeses. It's universally loved, so this is a great one to include, and I bet you can find a local mozzarella in your own area. So when I put my mozzarella on my cheese board, I like to only slice one open. That way, if they don't get eaten, we can put them back into their brine and they can just nestle in there happily until we're ready to enjoy. Because mozzarella is a soft cheese and it's meant to be eaten really fresh, the fresher you can get it, the better. Okay, now this next cheese is really special and maybe you've never heard of it before. It's called Caccio Cavallo. Literally means like on the back of a horse or a horse cheese. And this is the really special cheese that we got to see made when we were in Sicily. And I found some <laughs> and they shipped it to me. And I'm really excited to add it to this board. While I open this Caccio Cavallo, I would love to introduce you to the family that we met in Sicily who makes this very cheese. You guys know me, you know how I feel about cows. It was so incredibly special to head to this wonderful farm and meet Laborio, Domenica, and Giuseppe. This is a three-generation family farm that raises the Modica breed of cattle. I was so happy to just smell this cow and have this kind of sense of normalcy as we were moving around Sicily. One of the things that immediately caught me is that as Giuseppe was milking this cow, the calf was in there. Now, if you're familiar at all with the dairy industry, this is just not done because you wouldn't give any milk to the calf when that milk could go into cheese making. And I asked Giuseppe, I said, why is this calf in here? And he said that the maternal instinct of this cow was so strong that she actually wouldn't let her milk down without the calf there. He even said we would choose other breeds. He put his hand over his heart and he said, we use this breed of cow because of the passion. And you can taste that when you taste this cheese. The family was kind enough to take us back to their cheese making facility and let us see how the Caccio Cavallo was made. Now, like I mentioned, this is almost like a, uh, a provolone. It's um, a string cheese. So you can see how he tears it and then puts it back into the way and then forms it into those shapes. Now, lest you be confused, this is not made from horse milk, but rather it gets its name from the shape like two saddlebags that would go over the back of the horse, hence the Caccio Cavallo. I asked Giuseppe, I said, how did you learn how to make this? And he said, I've never not known how to make it. You can see him here, his, just, his skill is incredible. I have tried so hard to make stretch curd cheeses. He makes it look so easy. It is not easy. I just stood back in fascination and watched them work. 
It was truly something exceptional. And then Giuseppe made me very happy because he gave me a cup of warm, raw, modica milk fresh out of that cow that we just milked. And it was such a wonderful, wonderful taste. Here's the thing. It takes people like this family putting the effort in to keep these sorts of foods alive. This cheese does not exist in the modern supermarket. This breed of cattle, their milk specific to the breed, it doesn't exist. You won't find it in any sort of conventional farm because it just doesn't have the efficacy that we expect things to have now. And so when you see somebody doing this, they're choosing to do it the hard way because they see value in it. And that is something that I completely understand. After tasting the Caccio Cavallo, we got to taste another cheese that had been covered in last year's grape must, and it was so wonderful. Domenico told me that there's only seven or eight breeders left of the Modica breed in all of Sicily. They are all that's left between this cheese and extinction. There's a lot more to be said about this, but I'm here with my friend Dolores of Bella Figura and John of the Italian American podcast. When I put this cheese to my lips and I tasted it, tears came to my eyes. And he looked at me and he said, you've been hit by our people, <laughs> which made me cry even more. But then he said, the best thing about this place is how easy it is to be human here. And I have a lot of thoughts on that. It has swelled in my heart ever since we've returned home, what it means to be human. But I have to say, in these moments when strangers surround a table, we share a bite of something that we all feel a passion for. We taste the wine of the land and we cheers. It is so easy and beautiful to be human in those moments. So it might just be a cheese that you put on your cheese platter, but it's important to remember that it represents so much more. Kamikoto is the sponsor of this video here on the Elliott Homestead. And once again, we are so excited to get to share this wonderful company with you. These are the knives that we use in our kitchen. They're made using a traditional Japanese technique used by Japanese craftsmen, and it takes years to master and to make these knives from Japanese steel. They're individually inspected, come with a lifetime guarantee, and are delivered to you in a beautiful ash wood box that makes them ideal for storage or travel. These knives are used in Michelin star kitchens around the world for good reason. They're so incredibly sharp and so wonderfully well balanced. Kamikoto has been kind enough to offer Elliott Homestead viewers a discount. So visit kamikoto.com forward slash the Elliott to get $50 off your purchase of Kamikoto knives. It feels really special to kind of have an intimate connection with the things that you add onto something like this. It feels like you're really offering people a little piece of yourself, a little piece of your life experience. So this is a really fun one to not only taste again, but also to be able to offer to friends and family. Quite proud to have it here. It tastes very similar to a provolone and it kind of has that texture in your mouth. So it's really light. It's kind of like the next little step up flavor-wise from the mozzarella. So good. Okay, if we're stepping up in our flavor profile, you guys know this one. It's old and, you know, there's a reason that some of these are so well known and, and so famous, really, because we love them, because the taste is perfect. This is a Pecorino Romano. Pecorino means like made of sheep or of sheep, and Romano means from Rome. So this was a really popular cheese back in the day and it sustained a lot of Romans. Most of the Romano nowadays is made on the island of Sardinia, but still we call it Pecorino Romano. And it is so good because it's made with sheep milk. It kind of has this, this tang, this acidity, this sharpness to it. Whereas some of the other cheeses that we have kind of have like a little bit of a mellower element Pecorino, you know it when you taste it. Kind of demands your attention. 
Now I see a lot of rep, uh, recipes that will substitute in Pecorino Romano for Parmesan Reggiano, and that is just not okay because these are two very different cheeses that have two very different flavor profiles, which is why we're going to be adding both of them to our cheese plate. This is a big old slab and just taking it out, I can smell it. It smells nutty, it smells sharp, like tangy, almost like a little bit of yogurt, but so, so good. Okay, this next cheese may be a new one for you. If you dig deep into old Italian cookbooks, though, you've probably seen it everywhere. This is Grana Padano, which I believe is one of the most common cheeses in Italy. So, whereas Pecorino Romano hails from the south of Italy, Grana Padano hails from the north. This is made in the Po River Valley, and it's sort of like Parmesan's uh, more cost-effective best friend. It's really similar. It's another hard cheese that's crumbly, really salty, and has a lot of kind of that umami flavor going for it. Look at this. <laughs> it says Grana Padano right on the rind. There's no confusing that with any other cheese. This smells like a warm smoothness, kind of a pasta. It really lacks the sharpness of the Pecorino. And it has that beautiful color, texture. This is kind of like a crumbly, hard cheese. So this is typically made from a skimmed cow's milk. This is typically aged for about five months, which is what this one I believe has been aged for. And it's gonna be a wonderful addition. I'm obviously making a gigantic cheese board. This is a ton of cheese and would serve a lot of people. So if you get a big wedge, which is a really cost-effective way to buy these cheeses is to buy a bigger piece, cut it down into smaller pieces, which I'll show you when we get to the Parmesan. Just cut off a pretty chunk of it, lay it out on a smaller board, you're good to go. All right, the king of all cheeses in my mind is Parmesan Reggiano, and that's gonna be our final cheese to add to our cheese board today. This is the last little remnant of my giant piece of Parmesan that I brought back in my suitcase when we came back from Italy a few months ago, and this is all that's left. But it's aged over two years, it's grainy in texture, it hit, hits every single taste bud in your mouth, and without question, Parmesan Reggiano is my favorite cheese to add to a cheese board. I could happily just eat this, have a glass of wine, and be good to go. So I'm gonna share this with the cheese board as much as I just wanna hoard it and eat it all myself. I needed a little bite to keep me going. It's amazing the flavors that can come out of cow's milk when it's handled really well and aged really well. I do have one more cheese to add. I know I said five, but because I love Parmesan so much, I'm gonna be adding a second Parmesan. This one's quite a bit younger and it has a much different flavor profile. These are pieces that have been cut off the rind and they do this just for max. So when you buy three pounds, you get three full pounds without any of the rind still attached. What I love about these is they're smaller. I can keep one in my small fridge up here, have one to use and then keep the rest in the bigger cold room. So it's just a little bit of a convenience as opposed to dealing with a giant cheese wedge, for example. Like I mentioned before, it comes from the, from the Emilia Romagna kind of region, and there is a town actually called Parma in that region. So you get the Parmigiano for the Parma area where it's made, and then Reggiano from the Emilia Romagna region where it's made. So it's just a way of distinguishing where this cheese actually comes from. Look at this, you can just see the texture all tucked inside there. Let's give this one a taste and see how it tastes. So similar, but much smoother. It doesn't have nearly as much of that grainy texture. I love the grainy texture, some people don't. And if you don't, a younger Parmesan would be the way to go. I know the trend is to fill these boards with all kinds of fruits and nuts and olives and breads and crackers. But what I love about this really traditional way of doing a cheese board is that the highlight is on the cheese and nothing else. And when you've invested this much in putting special cheeses out and wanting to share them with people, you wanna make sure that they get the spotlight that they deserve. So this is a bit simple by today's standards, but it's the way I really love to present these cheeses because they're stars. I think they're stars. 
The only thing really that I'm gonna do now to finish it up, I have the last of this beautiful sage from my garden. Rosemary would be another beautiful thing. Fennel fronds would be another beautiful thing. I just want a little bit of greenery to just sort of soften the edges just slightly. So I'm just gonna lay some whole sage branches around. Hope you guys love getting to go to Sicily with me and seeing how that Caccio Cavallo is made. If you get the chance to try it, please do. It's so wonderful. There are so many wonderful cheeses for us to enjoy in the world. These are some of my very favorites and I hope you enjoy them as well. Cheers. <laughs>